So today on Project Inner, we're going to be discussing uh, Ecob4, some of the installation, uh, some of the settings for heat pump. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera over here. Um, this is my one of uh, two of my Ecob4 units. Um, this is, does have the Alexa capability or Alexa built in. You can see with the little icon there, the line through it, I have it off because I have other Ecobs already in the home. So it's just a little bit of confusion. So I just didn't even set it up on the stat. Um, uh, a little bit about the settings as far as our insulation, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you do have any troubles, just call support. They'll walk you through it. It took me about um, 30 minutes for the first one and probably about maybe 10 to 15 for the second one. That's just because I had a little bit of trouble getting it to um, attach uh, to my uh, previous, one of the previous holes that I had in my sheetrock. But you can see it's, you know, it does look pretty good. Um, uh, I kind of wish this back plate, which you can get these in different colors. Um, uh, but a little bit about the settings. So if you go into here, this will show your weather. Um, this just shows here. If you, uh, home for now or if you have it in away mode. So if you go to, that just basically tells you your system whether you have it in heat or cool. Um, you can also set your fan to come on every five minutes or every hour to kind of help keep the hot or cold spots in your home to a minimum. These are your sensors. As you can see on this particular unit, I have three sensors only two are currently in operation um, in the uh, current mode that it's in. Um, I have one in the basement, but I very rarely use. Uh, just stays a little bit colder down there. I'm trying to heat that up uh, upstairs would be a whole lot warmer. Um, I do not use the smart uh, or home away. This is kind of like geofencing. Do not use that and I do not use follow me. Uh, that basically if you kind of enter a room where a sensor is at it will detect and get it to the optimal temperature. Um, the main reason for me getting the EcoB was to minimize auxiliary heat. Um, and as you learn about thermostats, uh, they're designed for your comfort and more or less not, or less directed towards energy savings. Um, so these are some of my settings. So you go to thresholds. Um, uh, I do not use the auto heat and cool. That's, you know, if you have it set to heat and set to cool at a desired temperature, it can do either or. Mine in the area that I live in is either straight on heat or straight cool. Um, so I do not use the heat cool minimum delta because I have that function disabled. Uh, configure staging, you want to put this to manual because this gives you more options down below here. So your auxiliary heat, maximum outdoor temperature, I have set at 38. Um, people will sell you to tell you to set this way lower. Um, I'll show you another setting that basically kind of overrides that, but basically this, your auxiliary heat will not engage if the temperature outside is above 38 degrees. Uh, it has to be below 38. The reason I have mine set at 38, so like say if it is raining and it does get a little bit of frost or something on the unit, it can go into uh, defrost cycle. Compressor minimal um, cycle off time. So if the unit comes on, reach the temperature, shuts off, it basically will wait 900 seconds before engaging in another heat or cool cycle. Compressor minimum outdoor temperature. Uh, do your research on your own unit um, on this. I currently mine have mine set to 10 degrees. Um, some compressors are capable of running down to zero or even below zero. But do a little research. I kind of give myself a little room for air there. Uh, AC overcool max, so this will kind of help with your humidity in your home during the cool um, cycles. I you do not use that feature because you're going to over basically overcool to reach a des desired humidity level. Do not use that. Heat temperature differential uh, is a degree and a half. That's basically going to, if you have your Temperature set to 72, it's gonna basically engage heat 
um, or cool down here also um, at a degree and a half lower than the set point is when it's going to engage. Uh, auxiliary minimal on time, so if the auxiliary heat kicks on, it's going to run for a minimum of five minutes. Uh, the heat uh, dispensation time, uh, basically this will run the fan after the heat shuts off for an additional 30 seconds just to push all that heat potentially out of the duct. Uh, cool dispensation time, I'll have on auto. Compressive minimum on time is five minutes, which is uh, default. Uh, and then this is the feature I was talking about that will kind of override that uh, auxiliary heat um, outdoor maximum tension of 38. So if you have this set compre um, compressor to aux temperature delta, which is right here, I currently my mine set to 3. So if you have your temperature set in the house state is 73 and it's maintaining with just using the compressor at 72, it's never going to engage the auxiliary heat. Um, if it drops down below a three degree temperature differential, which you can also adjust this um, however you would like. Um, but if it drops below that, then it's going to engage auxiliary heat to reach your desired temperature setting. Um, in my, um, on my other uh, stat in the uh, second story, I usually set this on two if it's going to get below 30. Um, it usually doesn't really have an issue with keeping up until it gets to about 26 degrees and um, auxiliary reverse staging I have on so basically if uh, it's heating uh, say you had it set to 73 it gets to 69 it calls for auxiliary heat it gets it back up to 72 and then it realizes hey I don't need the auxiliary heat anymore I can finish the cycle heat cycle on the compressor alone it will shut off the auxiliary um, heat is how I understand that um, so that's just a little bit of my settings for a heat pump like I said uh, insulation was pretty simple um, I did these right after doing a hybrid uh, water heater so if you haven't seen that video check that out um, but I did notice a a big savings between the two um, it's kind of hard because I did these kind of right after that but definitely in the winter huge savings uh, I have done solar also which I got some videos coming up on that um, a little behind but my October bill uh, was $85 I cannot recall the kilowatts but I'll, I'll dive into that a little more into a, in a later video but that was prior to doing the solar and from the previous years, like I know it was around 600 and some kilowatts for that month of October. For the previous year, um, I probably was at around 1500, between 12 and 1500 kilowatts. So I definitely almost half between this, the stats and the hybrid water heater. So if you have any questions, please leave those below in the comments.